If you want the highest vision, go for the highest teaching. So, do you want the highest vision? What is your vision of life? What is your vision of life? What is the beginning? What is the end? What is life? So when we talk about the highest vision, we're talking about being the highest we can be, the best we can be. Would you agree with that? Or the life, your life being beautiful, your life being meaningful, your life being fulfilled, correct or incorrect? All those things. However, when you start off in life, all your visions, when you're young, you know, you're going to get married and it's going to be a fairy tale forevermore and life is going to work. You're going to have this home and the flowers and the perfect job and, and life isn't like that at all, is it? It sometimes can be. So, um, and the reason why it isn't like that is because we are not taught, we're not taught the highest truths when we come to this earth. Schools teach us that we have to be so smart in order to get somewhere in life. So if you're not, no problem, if you're not so smart, then you know what? You don't have the highest visions. We are taught that um, material things, material things, you've got to have a good job, you've got to have a good job, you've got to have lots of stuff, lots of stuff before you can be happy. So the vision, it, it, it's not truthful. Because what is the truth? The truth is first and foremost, the highest truth and the only truth that we know for, for sure is that we're going to die and that everything will change. And we're not taught all these things. We're not taught one day you're gonna die. I think if you were young and we were told, you know, you're gonna have life on this earth. This earth is full of dualities. They're gonna be good days. They're gonna be bad days. The good days you can all deal with, but the not so good days, you're not so strong. However, if you really understand that you are soul and your energy, and you're just here enjoying the movie, the divine movie, and one day you leave the movie. So when the bad days come, prepare yourself, be strong, meditate, remember who you are, your spirit having a material existence. Remember, remember, remember. And if you're told this every day at school, then you're taught all the other stuff. Enjoy the wealth, enjoy this, enjoy that. You'll be able to enjoy everything. And you will be also able to understand loss. You will be able to understand death. But we're taught none of this as children. Yes, we hear about death, but it's a scary, very scary thing. I remember at school when my friend, one of our classmates in school, was 11 years old. And she, she had cancer and she died and she was sitting next to me. She was a Chinese girl. And I went to a funeral and they gave us her photo and all of us friends, we were scared. We were frightened of a funeral, you know. And I remember going home and thinking of ghosts and being haunted instead of... One side of me was so sad that my friend had died and the other side of me was so fearful of her death. At her funeral, funeral we were seven or eight friends and her mother just screamed the whole time hysterically, which made it even more scary for us. So I remember I was scared of death for years. It was such a frightening, horrific thing. And then when I stopped yoga, I realized, oh, you know what? That is just exit to another world. <laughs> and I really feel like that, by the way. Of course, you feel the pain of loss. You always feel the pain of loss because loss is hard. Hmm? Loss is hard because we get used to things and we get, we're, we're human also. So we have the attachment to certain things. But with the spiritual knowledge, the attachment is not as, it will not hold you down. You will understand that we all have to go. So the highest knowledge we can have in our life is that we are just going through a movie. So sometimes I ask, and I'm sure we all of you ask, okay, God, couldn't you make it a bit easier for us? <laughs> why does it have to be so many wars? Why, does, why do people have to suffer so much? And for years I asked this question. And really the thing is, with our human personality in this movie, 
If things are made too easy for us, we take everything for granted. Do you know how many people have come to see me? <laughs> and this is really interesting. And, and, and I can say this. Uh, in relationships, if one partner has a lot of money, etc., and the other partner gets into, the woman gets into the relationship, no, they meet each other because they're both working and they're both stimulating each other, all right? Then the man will look after the woman totally, do everything for her, and within five or six years, he'll start to resent her. And that woman will come to me and say, my husband calls me lazy. He says that I don't do much. But when he met me, I was exciting. Well, I do everything in the home for him. But you gave up who you were. You gave up who you were because you became too comfortable, too satisfied. And so the boredom started. You see, when things are so peaceful, we sometimes take, we take life for granted. And then we don't appreciate what we have. So many times I have to tell them, you know what? Maybe he's right. Go get a job. <laughs> when he met you, what were you like? Yeah, it was an exciting person. Do you like yourself who you are now? You know, Nalini, now that you tell me, I really I don't do much with my life. How does that make you feel? How do you, does it make you feel? You don't have to get a job, but you can do something else. Have a vision. Have a high vision. What are you doing with your life but sitting at home and cleaning home all day? And you can afford to get a maid, so get a maid. What can you do with your mind? What can you do with your life? You know? And then they start to rediscover themselves. And it's really quite interesting because there are so many dreams they have inside of them that they've locked up because it was too comfortable. So when I see these cases, when I see cases like this, then I realize... You know, it takes sometimes disaster to wake us up. It takes, um, you know, I would say God knocks. <laughs> so quietly, hello. The odd comment from somebody, don't you think you should be doing this with your life? You don't listen. Oh, da, 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 da. Then he pounds. But of nagging starts in your life. This is for, you know, males as well. We have the same problem with males as well these days. The women can't get the men to get to work. <laughs> and pounds and doesn't listen. Breaks your, down, your, your door down and then you listen. And this is what suffering is. Breaks our door down so that we have to listen. And so really, if you look at the highest vision, the highest vision, it's actually really clever, isn't it? It's always waking us up to be the best we can the best in life we can. See, it's very easy to blame everybody else for what's happening to us. It's so easy to do that. And we keep saying, yeah, I know all about that. Yes, I know this knowledge. But even with this knowledge, many times I've seen yogis who have this knowledge, what do they do? They go back home and they think they're better than their partners, or they think they're better than everybody else. You've lost the plot. <laughs> We're not better than anybody else. With this knowledge, we should live in the highest vision. Understand that you're in different wavelengths. So if you're in a higher wavelength, then you really have to understand that this person is just on a different wavelength. What do you do? If you really can't deal with the lower wavelength, then you really have, and you're clashing all the time, then you really have no choice but get some peace and walk away. But if you're on higher wavelength, what can you do? With love, with love, you can bring the other wavelength up. You have to ask yourself this question. Why are you with this person or why are you in this situation? Why are you in this job? You know, why are you there? Are you bringing it up to your wavelength or are you sinking down to their wavelength? You see, this is why we don't live a highest life. We always sacrifice what is best in us the purest in us, to almost want to change somebody else. When we want to change somebody else, we actually have the lowest vision. Why? Because we think we can change people. That's a really low vision. We don't have the faith in this divine power. If they want to be changed, they will, be. They will change themselves. So what do we do? We sell ourselves short by becoming nasty, aggressive, looking down on somebody else. 
And that doesn't work because that's not us too. It makes us the worst we are. We don't like ourselves when we're doing that. Do you like yourself when you're nagging and complaining? Men or women alike, do you like yourself? When you're on at somebody all the time, you should be doing this or that. You know, you don't. You get uncomfortable. There's a feeling of discomfort. You know there is something. And then there's an argument inside of you and says, no, but I'm doing it for their highest good. But they don't think it's for their highest good. They don't know it's for their highest good. You can break your head and you think, I can, you know, if you just listen to me, our lives could be beautiful. But maybe if you could listen to yourself, your life would be beautiful. And yourself, what do you want for yourself? What is your highest vision? For me, the highest vision is peace. Somebody asked me, why do you do this all day long, every day of your life? Gives me peace, keeps me away from Nelani. <laughs> keeps me away from the chattering mind. It gives all the nonsense. That goes on because the mind is the mind. It will do its talk. But when you are in the higher work, the higher vision, which is serve, love, give, meditate, purify, realize, when you're constantly thinking, that and this lower part of you the one that creates the lower vision that creates hell in your life that makes the hell around you is drowned because the higher one is living so how do we live our highest truth in the highest ways is to always be the best we can i'm not saying that you know it's not natural as human beings that we don't get angry once in a while it's not natural that we don't feel uh, um agitated sometimes you know my master used to say you know if you don't argue once in a while in your relationship then your relationship will be really boring <laughs> you need some spice but understand it's spice don't get so emotionally deep into it because you're temporary remember you're watching a movie and it's your own movie you know when you watch a movie on I always say when you turn on a film you want an exciting film if you have a boring film you fall asleep isn't it true Give him a lot of yes, so oh, let's be small, let's just be small, that is so good. <laughs> right? <laughs> the voice, even if you hear somebody talking, the voice is like a drone. Du, du, du. Very peaceful, but uh gonna fall asleep. So it it, it so this 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 creation is so perfect. I mean if you can really see God's plan is really quite perfect. You know, when you can really understand that, that's the highest knowledge. That the plan is so perfect. That we, what is the highest knowledge? We came from the one. We keep saying this. What is the teaching? Advaita. Advaita, the scientists call it one consciousness. We call it Advaita. It comes from one. And I asked myself a hundred times, why would God want to create all this if it's all one and it's all peaceful? Because it got too boring, my master would tell us. Swami Satchidananda used to say, it just got too boring you know he often tells the story of the chessboard and i think i've told this many many times but i'll tell it again you know he used to tell us a story see you have a piece of wood and it's a piece of wood and it's a piece of wood and it's a piece of wood there's nothing happening so what do you do you take the piece of wood and you cut it in half you make a board and then it's a board. It's still wood and it's still a board and it's still, you can't do anything with it. So then you paint it into black and white. Now you've got a little black and white, black and white. Still too peaceful, nothing's happening. So then you take that piece of wood, chop a little bit more, and then you make the pawns to play chess. And then it's all white pawns, same wooden ones. Oh, the same, nothing's happening. Then you make some white and some black. Now you got dimension, white against black. But after a while, same, same, same story, you go here, nothing is happening. So you, he creates, the, the woodcutter creates more and creates the bishop and then creates the king, then creates the queen and the knight, just all created. Now we have a game. We have a game, and now it's interesting. And when you finish the game, you know those chess boards that you put in all the pieces? Have you had those? I had those as a child, right? And then you close the board, and at night, it's all one. <laughs> Again. So our life is kind of like that. It's an experience. It wanted to know us. It, 
the one wanted to separate itself. And that's the highest teaching, that's Advaita. Can you say Advaita? Or oh, Vedanta, the end of all knowledge. That's what Vedas means knowledge. Anta, Vedanta, end of all knowledge. That is the highest knowledge. And what is the, what is the end result? We don't know where we're going to go from here. We do know we're energy. We do know we're spirit. We do know all this. But do we really know it? You can only really know it when you see your life change and you're living in your highest, the highest way you can. And what is the highest way you can? Despite everything going wrong, you still maintain your peace and equanimity of mind. Why? Because you've understood we all came from the one and this is a movie. Now, really nice when you come from that understanding part. If you really have this knowledge, and this is why it's really important to meditate. You can read about it. I can speak about it. Yeah, you got it. You've understood it. I know everybody in this room has understood exactly what I said. But have you lived it? Do you experience it? This is why we'll do some meditation today. You know, uh, This is why meditation is so important. Because what are you doing in meditation? What are you actually doing? You're connecting with the source. You're going deeper and deeper and deeper within you. And what's happening is the mind is resisting because the mind is all about what's happening outwards, isn't it? Or all your secrets inwards. But all your secrets inwards is to do with your life outwards anyway. So it's always battling with you. It's always wanting to be in charge. So you let the battle of the mind continue. And you focus, you go deeper with it, and the mind's going on. And what you are doing, you're either just overcoming in and going deep within. It's like the sea, right? You've got the waves on top. Then you've got the underlying currents. But right at the bottom, 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 it's still. Still. We want to get to that stillness. So it doesn't matter what the waves are doing up here. When you connect with that stillness, there is a sense of peace. And we do this every night when we sleep, when we're in deep sleep. Do you know where you are when you're in deep sleep? You remember your dreams, but deep sleep every night, we disappear. Where do we go? We don't even know because we don't even, we're not even in REM. We're not in our dream world. But where are we? This is our rest time. We connect with the source at that time. That's why deep sleep is so important. Now, what is meditation? They say there are four states of mind. The conscious mind, the subconscious mind. Then you've got the dream world. I'm sorry, we've got four states. You've got the waking state. Then you've got the dreaming state. Then you've got the sleeping state. And then you've got awake during sleep. Awake during sleep. So you're in a deep sleep state, but you're awake. Some of you have experienced this in deep relaxation. You're really like in a really deep state, but you're not sleeping. You're awake. Where were you? You're disconnected from the mind. In the moment I say, take a sleep, do slow, deep breath of deep relaxation, everybody goes, and you're back. Where are you back from? Where did you go? Why do you feel so good after deep relaxation? You're awake, but your mind is no longer disturbing you. So you're connecting with that source, that energy field that you came from, the consciousness, the consciousness, the one. So when you want to live a really high life and a good life, you know, Master Chinmayananda used to say, uh, what did he say? Simple thinking, high living. Simple thinking, high living. Keep your thinking simple. That is really the truth. Watch the mind. You know, sometimes today people with so much psychology, they analyze themselves so much. So much self-criticism. So much. But why is this like this? And why did this happen like this? And why? Do you know what? Stop all that. Maybe there is a reason and maybe there you will never find out the why. But all the whys, where is it going to get you? You've questioned so many years already. Do you want to spend the rest of your life questioning? 
It will always be why is this happening? There will always be but what? But if? But it's done. And you notice your mind doing a lot of but what? But that, 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 that. Just keep it still. How do you keep it still? Ask yourself. Go back. Go back to your source. Who am I? Who am I? I'm spirit. What is my desire here? Peace. How do I want to live peacefully? I can't change so many things. So why am I keep going back into the same record again and again and again and again? How do I want to live peacefully? <laughs> you know, you keep telling yourself, how do I want to live peacefully? How do I want to live not only peacefully, but serving mankind to make my life world, worthwhile. Why? Because when you get to that source, you realize that everybody gets to the same source and we all come from the same sea. All of us. And we all experience at that point the same, same connection with what we call God. It's the same connection. All of us have it. Once you've realized it, you realize everybody is the same as you. And the only covering is the mind. So what do we do with this? And this is why we study yogas for so many years. Because the mind is just all the time at us. Every single day we get up in the morning, the first thing you have to do, what to do, what to do. Da, 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 da. It's singing all day long. It doesn't stop. This is why it's so important, I always say, to start your day with meditation. It's quiet in the morning. It's quiet before everybody gets up. It's silent. You can really hear your mind talk. <laughs> you can really hear it scream. And everything that you feared the day before was fine while you slept. But you wake up and all those images come back again. Now, this is the time, because it's so quiet, to take a few deep breaths and say, I'm going to connect with my higher self highest vision of life, my highest I want to be. This stuff will make my day just go all wrong. It's just going to make my day go all wrong. I know. I've done it a million times. So if I have to live with this, then let me live also with the God within me, the higher self within me. And that loves peace. Now, the moment you say that, you take control the mind will change its thinking. It will change its thinking. Yes, you're using intellect against mind, but now you're working at a higher level, a higher level. You're going deeper. You know, what is, you know, the uh, koshas that I taught you, right? The first physical anamaya kosha. The second pranamaya kosha, the breath body. The third, the mind, manomaya kosha. The fourth, Vijnana Maya Kosha, the fifth Ananda Maya Kosha, which is your bliss body. So when you're working with Vijnana Maya Kosha, you're closer to Ananda Maya Kosha. But you're using Ananda Maya Kosha, your bliss body, <coughs> to tell your intellect what is the most important thing? Peace, harmony, love, kindness. These things bring me harmony. So using your bliss body to tell your intellectual body to think in the highest. The intellectual body is not about how many books you've read. It's not about that. You've read enough. All of you in this room have read so much about spirituality. So now it's time to use all that knowledge, all that knowledge, and put it into your intellectual mind and say, what is the highest vision? What is the highest teaching? What is the highest teaching? Keep going back to that highest teaching. Only then... Can you subdue the mind? <coughs> if you don't go to the highest teaching, the mind will always bully you. It will always take... You could be sitting half an hour in meditation, but there's, if you don't know how to go deep within and connect with the highest vision, you cannot work with this. This is why we suggest Swadhyaya, study of spiritual books. So your mind is really crazy in the morning and you try and think an under my kosha, peaceful thoughts, and you can't. For God's sake, pick a book up that is spiritual. Pick a sentence up that touches you. That touches you. Take one thing up. One sentence memorize and repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. You know? 
what is the meaning of this life? You can even ask that. What is life? What is death? What is my life about? How do I want to live? You choose yourself. You talk to yourself. Keep going there. Take one sentence to remind you. Meditate. Then the mind goes crazy again. Then take what? Many people use the golden present. For five years, my first started to meditate. Because my mind was so crazy, I would, you know, when as soon as I sat to meditate, first of all, I just made my space. That is really important. Make your space at home. Really important. Because in the beginning, you're not strong. You're very weak. So you need all the props. Props are necessary in the early days of practice. So is discipline. Really necessary. You really have to be tough the first years of practice. First many years of practice. So you need your space, you need your props. They all get energized. And they all kind of know, because everything has vibrations, that this is what you want. They'll help you. Everything is divine. You know, we used to say, um, I was told many years ago, when I went to India with my dad once, he said, get an asan. And it goes, what is an asan? I don't know what it is. He said, it's a piece of cloth, either silk or pure wool or pure cotton and you can carry it everywhere with you so when you travel you meditate it over your cushion at home but you take it everywhere with you when you travel and I don't know if you remember the early day retreats I used to what I do? what's happened to my asana I don't even know what it is I've given it away now for years I carried my cushion and my asana with me everywhere and then I thought it's too heavy to carry a cushion to Hong Kong so I just take this wool and it was wool I bought it in India it must be so I don't know where it is now and I like used it for maybe 20 years carried it but the moment I sat on it the energy came up why so many years into something what happens it gets your energy and it kind of knows. It's like a bed, right? When you're really tired, touch your cushion, it knows you want to sleep now. You're so exhausted. Oh, my bed. You know, you go to your bed and you sleep. It's the same with the asan. I am going to go there and I'm going to meditate. It's the same principle. And you just relax with it. So make, make this space for yourself. You know, things that make you very, will make you meditate. I used to travel a lot with Lord Ganesh, Lord Jesus, all in miniature form, everywhere. <laughs> carry things with me, make my own temple. Now my temple is everywhere. I don't carry anything with me. But it took me many years. I was very attached to it. Then I started giving them away. Oh, this is lucky. I've worked on it for so many years. Now I wasn't attached to it anymore. Now it's everywhere. I can make my temple anywhere, and anywhere I travel. But that comes later. Many people come to me, oh, I can meditate anywhere. I'm going to look at them and say, that's why your mind's so messed up. <laughs> it's not true. You really need them discipline. Really train, train. Because really the highest, if you want to live in the highest way, you really have to train for the highest truth. It's not easy. If you want to win a race and go into Olympics, they have to train, 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 train. Whatever job you want to be good at, you have to train, 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 train. Isn't it true? You go to the gym, you come to Hatha Yoga the first day, maybe your bones are stiff and you feel not so good. Six months later, you do it every three or four times a week. Your body is, wow, wow, moving in all directions that you never believed. But don't put a discipline in. in. Oh, it's too hard. It's not for me. You're not going to get there. The body's not going to listen to you. You have to train it. Every time when uh, Joanna comes to the class or Anita, you know, uh, the Hatha Yoga class, I remember before she was like, like this. <laughs> and, you know, today I watched her up to here. I was like so excited for her. Do you know, it just feels, okay, it's taken a few years, but she's got there. And I watched them going up into the shoulder stand and boom, easily. Whereas a few years ago, Anita could remember how much struggle we had to get her up. And now she, boom, with you both, boom. I said, wow, what's happened? This is wonderful to watch. And what happens after that? How good do they feel? Hmm? And then I watch Dharma, who's been doing the teacher training, and his whole body has changed with Hatha Yoga. Everything is so easy for him. <laughs> do you know? And a few months, a year ago, yes, he did it. But with the training every day, practicing, he's really, his body has got the art of all the movements. Perfection in action. 
And Michelle, look at you. What a difference in your body. And even the body shape is changing. Have you noticed? Yeah, your body shape is changing. Everything is changing. You're lighter. So you see, you put in the discipline, you get the results. You don't put in the discipline, you don't get the results. So you can complain all your life, why I'm not going, why am I not getting there? And it's really because we delay the discipline, we delay it. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, you may be dead tomorrow. You may be dead tomorrow, I made myself, I want to know God while I'm living, or my version of God, whatever it is. I want to do it while I'm living, it's too late when I die, I have to come back again and learn it again. If I have to, great, let me know it the next time around, at least I'll have a, a good job like this life. <laughs> this life has been pretty good, even with all its sufferings, it's been pretty good. And I've been through quite a bit in this life, death nearly four times. You know, from right from riches to rags, the other way around. I think it's easier to be rags to riches, <laughs> and back to riches again. You know, and then it's it's just been and then death one after the other, hmm? and then it's been one thing after another. But it's been a great life because I can tell you, it's been an exciting life. There's no boring to my life. But if it wasn't for the downs, how would I know the ups? And how could I be sitting here? How could I be talking to you? How can I understand your suffering? How can I know what you've gone through if I didn't go through it? I wouldn't be able to talk from here. I'd be talking from here. And would that help? No. So all the sufferings, all the pains you've suffered is so brilliant. If you don't get bitter and you can see that's really the highest vision. Use whatever you're going through and use it as service. No. Service brings the highest joy. Service brings the highest joy. But what is service? Service is knowing you. Service is loving yourself first. Because you cannot serve anyone if you don't love you, if you don't bring out your own gifts, if you don't have the strength, if you're hiding in the background. Yes, you can be quiet in the background, but you can be full of service because that energy is coming from you. And people can sense your energy. You don't need to be talkative for a person to sense your energy. The, en the vibration, the love in you is what gives you your energy. And that love in you can only exist or be felt if you feel the peace yourself. So the first place you work is discipline, discipline, discipline on you. Every time you hear yourself complaining about somebody else stopping your flow in life, think again. Think again. Is somebody putting their hands to your neck? And if they are, you can call the police and get rid of them. <laughs> because nobody has the right to take away that freedom of finding the spirit from you. And then when you practice and you understand, oh, this is how it goes and this is how I remain. Yes, sometimes I'll go up, but I'm going to enjoy my up and I'm going to enjoy my little down, but I'm not going to go down, down, down or up, up, up. I know that's really dangerous. So I can go like this and have some fun, or I can go like this and retreat from life, which is also brilliant if you're ready for it, hmm? or if you're allowed to do it. It will be, it will be, you will know if you keep this really simple, simple, keep it simple. That's why all the greatest teachers, all the wise ones, and even all the writers, Eckhart Tolle, he speaks of the power of now. Why? Because now it's simple. This minute, it's simple. Somebody was telling me that in the family, they always speak of politics, politics, and they discuss and argue about politics in the news every night. And I go, and, and then uh, this person was saying to me, and my partner thinks I'm mad because I said I'm not interested in the politics. And my partner tells me, you must be crazy. You don't know what's going on in the world. You don't watch the news enough. And then the person answered, but I have peace in my home. You don't. It's happening out there. Why are you bringing the war to your sitting room? And that's what so many people do. It's happening out there. The world, yes, there's wars everywhere. But let our home be a haven of peace. Why are we arguing with ourselves because of the politicians. Discuss what we can do to make it better. But if you have different views on politics, no big deal. But there are wars at home going on. I said, really? People fight so much over politics? You know, you believe in this politician, that one? 
and I'm like, it's hell. And so I said, you know what? Just let the other person talk and keep quiet. <laughs> it's not your, your home. If you can't have heaven in your very own home, where are you going to find heaven? This world is really hell. But the reality is, if you live in this moment now, you're in heaven. You are in the best place you could be now. You walk out of the door, you're in the best place you could be then. If something befalls you that is bad at that moment, if you are in the now and you're just quiet, you will just attend to it. You will just attend to it. You will just attend to it. You won't think, why, the this is this, is you know, you won't complain, you'll just do it. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. You just attend to it now, simply. And you can only do that when you really are well grounded in your practice. You really have to be well grounded. Otherwise, you can talk about it for the rest of your life and it won't. It won't happen. And that's when you go home you inspire yourself and you just make discipline. I say to everyone, if you find it so hard, don't make it, don't say I have to meditate for half an hour. I only have to meditate for two minutes. You won't. You'll definitely do at least five. Because by the time you've got your cushion, you put the candles on, and you sit down, there's already three minutes gone, but you're already tuning in to the light, etc., etc. By the time you sit down, two minutes is too little. You'll want to do a little bit more, five minutes. Then if you can't, you sit at the candle, you look at the candle, and you think just beautiful thoughts. Look at the candle, think of what, yo, I'm so blessed. That's why Buddha says one of the best prayers is the prayer of gratitude. Start in the morning right away with gratitude, 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 gratitude. Because it's the truth, it's now. <gasps> I'm so grateful I have my little temple. That's how I used to start. I'm so grateful my space, oh, my time with God, my time with God, oh my God, I have time with you. Away from this world, which is temporary anyway. The movie's getting too much. <laughs> it's getting too heated up. Retreat. Retreat. When your home gets too heated up, I always say, go on a retreat. It's really healthy to be away from your families once in a while. It's not a bad thing. It's really healthy, but go on a retreat. Because you come back stronger, and you come back wiser, and you come back more peaceful, and you spend some time on yourself, your soul. And reminding yourself this is the highest vision is very difficult to do on a daily basis. Very difficult to do because the world shows us everything else. So the highest teaching, again, keep going back to the highest teaching. What is the highest teaching? We are one. Did you see Lion King? <laughs> you know what's the song by Elton John? We are one. Is it by Elton John? Yes. No, it's no. Circle of life, thank you. Yeah, that's the one I meant. It's the circle of life. It's the circle of life. Isn't that a beautiful song? Yeah, everything is a circle of life. And really, the Lion King is very symbolic of life in its highest spiritual form. Hmm? Protection of the family, protection of the children, protection of your community. And evil is always looming behind, ready to tear it apart and sometimes it wins but the next generation comes on and it takes over and it always loses and good always overcomes evil look through history if it didn't we'd all be dead after the second world war <laughs> we'd all be dead all europe would be dead but good always overcomes evil for how many thousands of centuries now hmm? but the evil is what makes us all think and learn and adjust ourselves. Is it really evil? Or is it a lesson? Can I forgive? Can I let go? It makes you look into your own ego. When negative happens to us, it really helps us to look into ourselves. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from me? My ego doesn't know how dare you do it to me? 
Or is it coming from a place understanding? The situation is teaching me something higher. It's teaching me to better myself. Or it's teaching me to be brave, to be who I am. Many times we're cowards. We don't use our gifts. We talked about that last week, you know. We don't use our gifts. We're too frightened to be ourselves. We're too frightened to be laughed at. <coughs> and obviously, when you're on this path, you do seem a bit insane to many people. <laughs> but you're happy. That's the way you see it. But you're happy. And this is why all the saints keep coming back to us and telling us the same thing again and again and again. Look at life as a movie. Don't get too attached to all that's happening outside. See it, understand it. Don't get so attached. That's the non-attachment. Two things Sri Patanjali tells us we have to do practice and non-attachment. Practice is the discipline, 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 discipline. And you know very clearly, by the practice of the eight limbs of yoga, the impurities dwindle away, and there dawns the light of wisdom. I love that. There dawns. Where does it dawn? From you, your own big Yanamaya Kosha. There dawns the light of wisdom, leading to discriminative discernment. All of everybody, even your parents will tell you, keep away from bad company. Isn't it true? When I was young, my parents always used to say that. Don't mix with the, around with people who are having drugs. Don't mix around with these people. Mix with good people. Why? And it's absolutely true. You mix around with the wrong people, you get the wrong habits. You mix around with the right people, you get the right habits. Even the greatest saint, the 6th century saint Shankaracharya, he said, you know, be in the company of the wise and the good. Because when you're in good company, you get elevated, be in satsang. And when you are elevated the mind, then you detach from all the nonsense of the world. When you detach, you become free. You become free. Because what causes the pain is the attachment to all these things. And nothing is yours anyway. You want to become free. Even in AA, what does it tell you? The first law is what? You know? Know that there is a higher power and a higher force beyond you. And that force in the time of need, if you practice using it, will come. Will work for you. It will always work for you. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. But don't, don't sit there lighting candles, like somebody told me once. She said, I go to church every day lighting a candle for one year and God never hears my prayer. Never answers me. And I said, have you done anything about what you want? No, just light a candle and make this happen. <laughs> Maybe it's not what you need anyway. <laughs> Poor God, what is the millions of things to look after? It doesn't get involved. This is why I love Vedanta. It, it, the divine is only love. It's only love. It shared it through us. So it can only get involved through us. So while we're in a human body, we can know God. We can know the divine peace. When we work in that energy, when we split ourselves, share ourselves in great love, we cannot know that energy otherwise. Hmm? Through meditation, it expresses itself in us. This is the human uh, mission. That's how religions came to be. Because all the religions originally just gave you the path like, like yoga did, like Sri Patanjali does. It just showed you, think like this, do good, be good. And if you do that, everything else will work. But of course, the Bible, the Old Testament, is full of stories uh, like the Mahabharata. If you read the Mahabharata, where the Bhagavad Gita comes from, it's amazing. You have stories about witchcraft, you have stories about uh, curses, you have stories about, you know, all these things. Well, these things happen in our world. But there are stories. And then from the juice of it, of the, the thing is, how do you step out of all this that's going on? Yes, these things exist in the world. Yes, people do white magic and black magic. Yes, there are wars and all this. But you step up, you transcend it and watch it. 
But what happens? They take these stories and this person did it this way, so I had to do it this way, and these things you get too involved in the story. And then we make up. A, then we make different. Oh, because this person did it at this time, and they did all these prayers to take away all the evil spirits. If I do this prayer and do all the evil spirits, suspicion. Da da da. Do you see? We change it to suit ourselves. We become superstitious. If I do this, this will happen. It's not about superstition. So be very strong. If you want to live your highest life. Be very strong in yourself, first and foremost. Give yourself discipline. Write yourself a little program. For me, it was easy. I stop. I do it, and I'm not stopping till I get somewhere. And that's it. And that's why it was easy. It was easy because the other part was harder to be miserable in this earth. I wanted to prove whether this science was working or not, or whether it was just a joke. And the only way you can prove it is by experiencing it or working yourself, and then you see the results. Your life is so much better than what it was. And every year you get older, and you think, "Oh my God, it can't get better. It gets better." Even though all the horrible things happening, you just see it getting better. And then you get excited about getting old because you know soon the time will come as you get older. Your time will say goodbye, and you're going to another dimension. Well, who knows? Who cares? It's now anyway. It's all now. It's all a movie anyway. It will, it will guide me. If I just live well, it will guide me. If you just live well, it will guide you. You don't have to worry. Don't think so much. You don't know anyway. Many people say, "Oh, I want to know about my past lives." Yes, if you're really, really desperate, then try to know. But what? How is it going to help you with this life? You can't even deal with one life. You want to know about all your other lives. Go ahead, spend another five years exploring your past lives. What is it going to do with this one? You've just wasted five years on something that's already gone so long ago. You meditate, you will know about your past lives. It will tell you. You will see them in dreams. You will know. You will see a certain fear that you have and go, "Why do I have this fear?" And then you get visions of, "Ah, oh, mm, I must have gone through this. It's an old, 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 deep samskara. We we call it. That's so deep in our psyche. It's come up now because I need to work it out and need to finish it in this life. You will know. You will be guided by yourself. Trust yourself. The highest is in you. That is the highest living. Connect with it. Connect with it. So practically every day, make a discipline for yourself, and no excuses. No excuses. Really tell yourself if you really want peace so badly and to live in the highest way possible, it's worth. Don't we do more for ourselves every day? I mean, we make so much time for everything else. You shower, you will wash your hair, you will have your breakfast. You make time for all that. Why can't you make at least half an hour for your spirit? Because if you charge yourself with your spirit in the morning, it will stay with you all day. If you don't charge your phone battery, it'll die down, and that's when the battery dies down. That's when the problems happen. When you're not in touch with the highest vision, you will be exhausted. You cannot do it, and when you are tired, you just cannot think positive. It's too hard. So you're fighting yourself. You might as well just go to sleep and say, "I'm not going to meditate." Because you're no use at that time, and know that you're no use, and just go to sleep. Get your sleep. Get up again. Next morning, start again.、Hmm? So, if you keep it up all the time, every day, then you will never lose the momentum. You will never lose the momentum, and then you'll want more when you see the results as they start showing themselves to you, and you start seeing, oh my God, all this stuff that I used to go in my head all day long. How did I think like that for hours and hours and hours and hours? How come I'm not crazy yet? You know, you look at the way you used to think, and you see the way you think now, and you go, "How did I do it? How do other people do it? How do we live in that hell year after year after year, and we don't even think it's hell till we get out of that hell?" And then you go, "Wow, I much rather live in heaven." Has my world changed? No. My vision has changed. The world is the same. Vision has changed.
because you're vibrating with the highest truth, so it will help you. If you just vibrate with the highest truth, all these traditions, the mind will change by itself. And as you think, it will become. It will really become. So ask, don't be afraid to ask. God bless me. Can you all say it with me? Bless me or life bless me or universe bless me, whatever you want to call it. God is easy for me. God bless me to be the best I can for me and everyone around me. Say it. God bless me to be the best I can for me and for everyone around me. And when you keep repeating that again and again and again, you'll get it. Because why? You're thinking it. You're seeing it. You're seeing yourself being blessed. And you will do it. It's just the way it works. It's connection. And in the beginning, you don't, you don't believe you can do it yourself. So you ask the highest within you. After a while, many years later, you'll say, I know it's doing the best for me. You won't even have to ask that prayer. You know. Something goes wrong. Oh, no, no, no. Don't feel sorry for me. I know it's the best for me. It's natural. You don't want people to feel sorry for you. Because you already know it's the best for you. Even though it's tough, you know it's the best. And to live like that is a high way to live. Because you live energetically. You live energetically. You live with meaning. You live with love. You live with love, which is so important. You live with non-judgment, which is so easy on the mind, isn't it? I think judgment must be the most exhausting thing in the world. I know there was a time when I judged everything and everyone, you know? It, it, even I just go back when I was 25, somebody separated, they were bad people. Do you know, that's how small thinking I was. And now for me, oh my God, how could I even think like that? I had no understanding of life. Zero, full of judgments. And now sometimes I think they separated the, the bravest people. When it's really bad, I'm not saying this for everyone, and when it's really bad, sometimes you have to leave it. Hmm? It's not about judgment. And then some who are so brave to stay and conquer and make change people in their relationships. Whoa, do you know? And I see, whoa, what courage. So my whole vision has changed. And boy, is it so peace, much more peaceful in here. Because you realize that everybody has their lessons and it's all different. And there's no right or wrong. When they're in pain, they just need compassion. That's all. Does it make them bad? No, not one single bit. It's just experience and everybody has their experience. We don't know why they have that experience. You wish you could take away it, it from them, but you can't. All you can do is love them and have compassion. You know, not judge. Judge is horrible. And that's how I used to think when I was 25. And I look at that and go, oh, I must have been a horrible human being. And I thought I was a moral human being. What a joke. <laughs> What a joke. I didn't know the meaning of morality. And this is how you shift the inner shift that it just that that, that the highest consciousness just um, shows you, shows you. It shows you, I don't know how it shows you, it just shows you. That's why I know that we vibrate with this all the time when we connect with it. And when we're not connected, we don't feel so good. We really don't feel so good. And the not feeling good is also a good thing because it reminds you that you want this energy in your life. You want it. Because it's a hard journey, this spiritual journey. It's really not easy. It's really, but at the same time, it's the only journey that makes sense. And at the end of it all, it's the only thing that gives peace. So in order to live the highest life, have the highest vision for yourself. See it. See yourself. Surround it. Now we're going to put some Sri Ram on in a while. And i just like you, I'll just give you, uh, i just like you to, I'll give you a few instructions now, and then you just go into it with a few 
I'll just make you do a few breathing techniques, okay? But what we'll do is, I would like you to imagine a white light. Start with the white light around you. Uh, you can either start with your eyes open, looking at the yantra or a candle. Just stare, stare, stare. And then just go in and just listen to that mantra. Just listen to that mantra. Imagine this white light around you. And just close your eyes and bring that candle all the way right here, right here. And then feel the love oozing from that candle, just coming up in the flames. And see yourself smiling. See yourself happy. See it, see it. Visualize yourself smiling and happy. See and ask, bless me that I can be the best I can. And then after you do that, just stay quiet. Okay? <coughs> so we're done. Thank you.